cold out there, Rocky, wasn't it? Hey. A little cold out there, kid, wasn't it? Are we okay? Hey? Are you alright? Rocky, okay? Hey? Rocky, okay? Right. Oops. Sam, I can't see if we've got on it. Come on. Right then, let's have a look what we've got now. We've covered quite a few topics, haven't we, today? Eddie and gagging for a fury or wilder fight. Now that he has seen that Joshua is on jelly legs. I've noticed Eddie Hearn keeps doing a lot of interviews saying that he wants to fight Wilder and he wants to fight Fury and blah de blah. You're not millions back didn't they, to fight Wilder but now that he's had a good idea enough Ruiz complacency sets in doesn't it they're starting to think do you know what Joshua can get beat at any time let's get as much money as we can out of job don't keep talking about legacy Eddie you don't care about legacy legacy don't put put your future generations of children legacy doesn't pay for your Eddie Earns great 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 grandkids to go to private school does it what he's doing now does so sooner or later what you're going to hear you're going to hear Eddie Earns say it's not about the belts it's about the fights for the fans and he'll spin that we all know it's a lot of rubbish in the boxing industry don't we but what can you do what can you do? March 28th, Usek Chisora, Lergovic Bacoli, Josh Kelly, David E. Venetian. That's a good fight. Connor Ben, Garton, Johnny Garton, Boatsy versus TBA. When's Boatsy going to have his coming out party? Because all we're seeing is Boatsy fighting just. What's that? Oh, we've seen it, Bawatsi fighting people that are not very good, aren't we? At least Anthony Yard rolled the dice, didn't he? At least Anthony Yard went and had a go, didn't he? He went over to Russia and he had a go. So as far as I'm concerned, Anthony Yard, and gets my respect as an exciting fighter, he's got to fight Boatsy sooner or later. Eddie Hearn's got Callum Johnson, he's got Bivol, and he's got Boatsy, but yet none of them are fighting each other. Why is that? Why is that? Callum Johnson's an hard fight for any of them. Any of them. I don't think you would like that, Rocky. It's pepper. It's all gone, Rockstar. It's all gone, mate. Come here. It's all gone. All right. I'm going to get some chicken in a minute, yeah? Let me just finish this video. I think so far the biggest show of the year will be the March 28th one. Usek Chisora pay per view. Ergovic. Bacoli, Chief Support, Josh Kelly, David Ivanesian, that's a great fight that. It's a very intriguing fight. Connor Ben, Johnny Garton. Well, Connor Ben seems to be fighting guys ranked below his ranking. He's ranked with WBA, Connor Ben. He's been in top six with WBA only for over a year, but they've moved him down because of backlash. But, but yeah, he's fighting Johnny Garton, he's not even ranked. So it's just somebody for Conor Ben to move down. But what I'd like to see with Conor Ben is I'd like to see him throw a jab because he ain't got a jab. But if David Evenetian beats Kelly, 
and he's a former world champion Evanetian. David Evanetian punches Josh Kelly upside down. I then want to see Evanetian against Conor Ben. That's what I want to see. That would be a chief support that for a pay-per-view. Like, that's a good fight. But Josh Kelly, I don't think he's real deal. I think people got too carried away with him. I think he gets beat. Uh, but that's the show of the year so far from any year. But the February 8th one's not bad, is it? It's a 6 out of 10, isn't it? The, the quick one with Callum Johnson on it. The Callum Johnson fight for me sells that one. That's not a bad show. The Usek Chisora one, though. That's good. It, it, basically, what it does... What it, what it is, is Davey Day, he knows that his job is to get as many pay-per-view fights as he can for Chisora. If Chisora fights Dillian White now and loses, he doesn't get the Usek fight. If Chisora fights Usek now and loses, he still gets the trilogy with Dillian White. They'll try and do a trilogy. That's just what they're about. Eddie loves a trilogy. <laughs> In other news, Tommy Frank and Sam Sheedy. Tommy's sparring that world champion flyweight. Is it flyweight or super flyweight? He's out in Ukraine. And Lomachenko's mate at that gym. Or the, I've seen photographs of Lomachenko with Tommy. Uh, so, I don't mean to say that Tommy's sparring him, does it? But it's good experience for Tommy and Sam Sheedy to be around people like that. Oh, Batman and Robin out in Ukraine, eh? In other news, uh, water is wet. Uh, I think that's about it, really. Uh, we spoke about Billy Joe Saunders, I think, didn't we? I mean, Billy Joe Saunders, right? How can I explain it? Billy Joe Saunders. It's the Billy Joe Saunders conundrum, isn't it? Right? Billy Joe Saunders, in my opinion, is going to go down like Frankie Gavin as the, could have done better. I mean, Frankie Gavin went to Chicago and he brought on the first gold medal of the World Amateurs, which is basically Olympic format, isn't it? He brought on a gold medal right, from World Amateurs. Our first ever one. <laughs> Carl Frotch had a bronze, David A had a silver, Joshua had a silver, uh, I think Robin Reed's had a silver, Yui Fury had a gold, didn't he, but he were world juniors. Robin Reed had a silver, I think he might have been world juniors. Frankie Gavin won a gold, right, and he was spoke about as being the something like, he was going to dominate like Roberto Duran. You know, he were, skills to burn he were gonna perform miracles and i'm a massive frankie gavin fan i know it's a boring tale this but everybody knows i brought frankie gavin to the table and dennis signed him up to fight for a world title with ibo and i were so proud of myself and then the fight got uh, cancelled with two weeks ago it was a fight in birmingham but yeah i made that possible and obviously dennis backed me on it just like he backed me with Josh Whale. But the difference with Josh Whale and Frankie is Josh Whale sells tickets. And that's different. Frankie do not sell that many tickets, does he? Um, a lot of things were going on behind the scenes and it didn't work out, did it? But I'm gutted because I like Frankie Gavin and I think he'll come back one day. But I think it might be too late then. And I think it's just a shame. And all it was with Frankie was just a bit of motivation, I think. They call him fun time Frankie, don't they, because he likes to go out. But I just think it's a shame. I think he'll probably go down as biggest wasted talent. He's, he's up there with Audley Harrison, isn't he? Another gold medal amateur. <laughs> they didn't fulfil the potential is the correct way of putting it, but I call it wasted talent. Now, we can't say Billy Joe Saunders has wasted talent because... Like Clinton Woods, he won an area belt, then he won a British Commonwealth, European, and a world title. And then he went on to win a world title at a higher weight, a super middle. So, Billy Joe Saunders isn't wasted talent, he's a multi-millionaire and he's done well. But, 
There's always a but with Billy Joe Saunders. He could have done better in my opinion. And I think if he doesn't fight Canelo or Callum Smith this summer, I think I'm off the Billy Joe Saunders hype train. I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I've just had enough of hearing about it. Billy Joe Saunders won a world title in 2015, right? What was he, who has he beat since then, really? David Lemieux? He took him to school and then he went home and showed him how to do his own work, didn't he? But David Lemieux's a one trick pony, isn't he? So, as far as I'm concerned, I think that. Billy Joe Saunders don't want to test himself, does he? John Ryder fought him in a very close fight. Eubank did. That back off, back off did in Paisley. Billy's been stop start with trainers. He started out with Jimmy Tibbs. He, he won the clean sweep with Jimmy Tibbs and Mark Tibbs. Performed out of his skin. And then he went to Adam Bull. We didn't last two minutes there. Or what, two weeks or something. He didn't last with Adam Bull. He's been stop start with Dominic Ingle, stop start with Ben Davidson. What's going on with Billy Joe Saunders? What? I don't know, but I think he's just going to go down as wasted talent. And there's nothing worse than wasted talent. That's what I think. Nothing worse than wasted talent. Got that quarter to nine on a Saturday night. I'm taking my little boy to uh, the mini hitters, not mini hitters, mini outlaws. I keep calling it mini hitters, mini outlaws. I'm going to take my little boy to mini outlaws tomorrow at Mickey's Athletic. My little boy is suffers from autism, and but he's a very bright kid, so I'm going to take him there tomorrow. He might work his set up into a state and block his Senate bathroom and not go. Because whenever I'm going to take him somewhere, if he's got time to think about it, 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 it over, over, overwhelms him. Like Christmas Day overwhelmed him. But I'm just going to go grab him from... I'm going to go get him in the morning. And... Uh, Grab him from his nana's in the morning and take him, so I hope that's going to go alright. Just let him run right in Mick Whale's gym, bit of interacting. Might take him for some breakfast in the morning, bit of porridge at uh, McDonald's at Fryber. Take him up there, and then take him to Mini Outlaws. I think that's about it, really. So I'm not out tonight. Bottle of wine and. Uh, a bit of warmed up lasagna, I think. What do you reckon, Rock? A bit of lasagna. I've got some lasagna in the fridge from that W Italian place at uh, Wickersley. If anybody likes Italian food, go up to W at Wickersley. It's gorgeous. It's a bit expensive, but it's nice. You can get a por two portions there, you can make it into eight. Two portions of lasagna there, they'll put it into eight, put it in your freezer, it's that nice. Let's do what I do, put it in the freezer. So I'm going to have some lasagna, I think, in an early night. I don't want to be sleeping in it morning. Take me dog for a walk in the morning and I'll take me a little lad there. You've got to have that bond, haven't you, with your children. If you get a chance to see them. But other than that, I'm alright. But yeah, Billy Joe Saunders, it leaves... Uh, it was a bad taste in my mouth Billy, with Billy. Dennis tried to sign him. He tried to sign all them Olympians from 2008. He bought them all Tag Ewer watches. All of them, Joe Murray, David Price, De Gale, Downer Sutherland, Billy Joe. All of them. And not one signed with Dennis. Unbelievable. Not one. Only Frankie Gavin, because of me, but you know, the fight never happened, it collapsed. And that's a shame because 
I know I got a lot of stick off Terry Chapman armor over this, but I'm a closet Frankie Gavin fanboy. I just think that his his skills are off the charts. Plus, he sparred Steffi Bull a few years ago and made him cry. <laughs> I'm only joking, Steffi. Keep watching though, Steffi. I'll send you a signed picture. It's only banter. It's only banter. Wine kicking in now. But yeah, Billy Joe Saunders, it's a shame what's happening to him. Uh, Dillian White, where does he go next? Well, it'll be Povetkin or Andy Ruiz. Povetkin, he is. Dillian deserves better than that, doesn't he? You know, if he's got any sense, Dillian, he'll just fight Joshua. Joshua vacates, doesn't fight Pulev. He fights Dillian White at Wembley. Gives everybody what they want, but... Would everybody buy into that now? I'm not so sure, you know. I'm not so sure, but Eddie's trying to monopolise the heavyweight division. And you've got 25 fighters in the heavyweight division, the top 25 in the rankings, and Eddie Hearn's got 12 of them. This has never been seen since the Don King era, when Don King had nine of the top 10 WBC fighters at one point. The only one he didn't have was Frank Bruno. That's a true story, that. And I think out of the top 15, I think he had 11, I think. There were Frank Bruno. There might have been Gary Mason. He was very highly ranked at one point. And then I think the others were Holyfield. And I think they were uh, Kathy Duva fighters, Lou Duva. So Eddie Earns trying to monopolise the heavyweight division. Um, He's done, he's done a lot of good for boxing, we can't knock Eddie, he's done a lot of good, but like I said, he earned 45 million last year and this year's 65 million, so Eddie earns on over a million pound a week for the last two years, over a million pound a week generating just off boxing, that's phenomenal that isn't it, that is phenomenal, right? it's unbelievable. To say he started out with Audley Harrison, Kel Brook, Darren Barker, Carl Froch, then Bellew, Nathan Cleverly, uh, Ricky Burns, and out were all them, how many of them did Eddie Hearn have from debut? None. None of them. None of them from debut. Who has Eddie Hearn had from debut that's won a world title? Who? Anthony Joshua, Cal Yafai, Callum Smith and Charlie Edwards. That's it, four. And they were all in the GB team from Sheffield, all of them. And who runs the GB team at Sheffield? Robert McCracken. Who's Robert McCracken's best mate? Tony Sims. Who's matchroom was head trainer at their gym? Tony Sims. So is there anything untoward going on up there at the EIS in Sheffield? This is where the Olympic team train. This is where the GB team train, the World Championships, the European Championships, the cream of the crop, the amateur kids, all train at Sheffield up there. And it's run by Robert McCracken. The trainer of Anthony Joshua. It's all a bit smelly in my opinion. It's lottery funded up there. But yet Eddie Earns calling shots. So Eddie Earn gets to speak to all these kids up there when he goes to see Joshua. And he'll sit down with them all and he'll say things like, When you're ready to turn pro, don't forget, give me a ring. And he'll have McCracken telling him who's good, who's dedicated. Because you know when you go out on these trips, these GB trips, McCracken will know who eats a bar of chocolate, who has alcohol, who stays in his room at night. And the ones who do that won't end up at matchroom. The ones who don't, well, they'll all end up with Frank Warren now. I heard stories that Frankie Gavin, James DeGale, Billy Joe, they want in bed early at night. Where did they end up? They all ended up with Frank Warren, didn't they? The ones who were in bed early at night and did everything correctly. 
Well, they all end up at the end, don't they? The Anthony Joshua's, Lawrence Acoli. Who's the other one? Joshua Boazzi. You know that group. You know they they all ended up with him. Callum Smith. You know. So, well, like I said, he's had four world champions from debut, but yet they've had is it fifty one world champions? So four from debut. Plus his dad had one here behind, so that's five. And to be fair, here behind, he wasn't in GB team, in Nigerian for starters, isn't he? But they've had five from debut, right? So the other 46, well, where did they come from? Well, they were all stolen, weren't they? So they've had five from debut, but four of them, they used their influence at the EIS, and the other 46 were stolen. So the only one that you can give him credit for, really, is Herbie Hyde. And that was his dad's, and he wasn't even born in the UK. And when Herbie Hyde won a world title, what happened then? Barry Hearn were in trouble, one of him match room, financially. They cashed him in first defence to Riddick Bowe in, in Vegas. Did they cash Joshua in first defence? No. They brought Eric Molina in, didn't they, for his first defence, or were it Dominic Brazil? Dominic Brazil. They brought him in, Dominic Brazil, a footballer who took boxing up. Bigger version of Curtis Woodhouse. Point I'm trying to make is this. People get too carried away by this matchroom hype train. When you scratch it all a bit bare and you look at how it all works and how it's all put together, what's going on up there at the EIS is nothing short of a tragedy. It's a lottery funded building. And the man in charge of it is Anthony Joshua's trainer and his best mate's Tony Sims, the macho med trainer. And Eddie earns up there all the time. And Anthony Joshua's got his manager's licence and he manages Akoli, Lawrence Akoli, and Boatsy. And they were in the same GB team, weren't they? They were in the GB team. So Joshua manages them and they train up there as well. It's all wrong what's going on wrong but who's making a stand against it we're talking about a lottery funded place up there and it's overrun with matchroom fighters I don't see any Frank Warren fighters up there or Dennis Hobson fighters up there or I don't see Mick, any of Mick Wales fighters up there or Steffi Bulls fighters or Glyn Rhodes fighters up there no 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 I don't see Luke and Nicky Smedley getting to take uh, Carl Baker up there to, to train no, it's all, it's all lottery funded, it's wrong. Is Cash Alley up there? No, Richard Towers fighter, no. I get called in for sparring, but it's wrong what's going off. They're trying to monopolise it. Try, it's like the England football team, when you're 14 you go to Lillyshaw, don't you, but it's now St George's. It's like Alex Ferguson going down there and getting pals with FA. And having f first pick of them all to sign for Man United, it's fundamentally wrong. Isn't it, Rocky? So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out to AJ Innovation Alloys. Thank you very much for backing the channel. You're a godsend. Thanks to Kevin Hall, South Yorkshire Packaging. And thank you for the people that have helped me with the channel from day one. Rico, K Official and Nicola. All right, peace out. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put some lasagna in uh, in microwave from Wickersley. All right. All right.